We're here with Dr. Jonathan Mugen, who's a computer scientist, machine learning, and data science expert, uh, and currently the co-founder of Deep Grammar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're glad you could come in. Um, you know, I wanted to bring up last year, you gave what uh, has been determined to be one of the most popular talks ever at uh, Austin Data Geeks Meetup. Oh, wow. Are you familiar Great. with that? Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, that talk was on deep learning. Uh, for someone who doesn't have a background in artificial intelligence and neural networks, can you describe what deep learning is yeah so deep learning is neural networks stacked together a whole bunch of neural networks mm -hmm. and so a neural network just consists of really a simple linear function of adding up a bunch of numerical inputs getting some output and then putting some little nonlinear function on top of that mm -hmm. so you could say like a simple neuron might be let's say you want to buy a car mm -hmm. and you have three features that matter you have fuel economy um, price and number of cup holders, uh -huh. and you, you could give these three features numerical values, okay. and you and you weight each one of them by some weight, which is a parameter. So mm -hmm. it could be you know the cup holder is really important, so you multiply that by ten, and then the fuel economy is not so important, you multiply that by five, mm -hmm. and the price is medium important, so it's by seven. Mm -hmm. You multiply all these up, add it up, you get some number, and if that number is above a threshold, mm -hmm. the neuron fires, and you buy the car. Okay, so. A neural network is just a bunch of these mm -hmm. kind of stacked on, on top of each other. So the decision on whether or not to buy a car may feed into the decision on whether or not to do something else. Okay. And that would then be that output of that one neuron would be an input into some other neuron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so deep learning is in some sense a new name for neural networks. Okay. But in some sense it's actually different because it's neural networks big. So like a whole bunch of parameters. They have millions of parameters. We just talked about three in our example of the single neuron. Yeah. You literally have millions of parameters that need to be learned. Wow. And the way it's learned is you often have, um, in machine learning, there's a dichotomy. There's a supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Okay. So supervised learning might be, let's say we know the answer to some question for a whole bunch of training examples. Like a classic example is a loan, whether or not this person should get a loan. Mm -hmm. And we know the people who have defaulted and we know the people who have paid back their loan. Mm -hmm. And you want the machine to learn to predict that. Mm -hmm. And so you could then feed it through the machine. And if the machine says, ah, this person will default, but you know the person will not because mm -hmm. you seen it, right. then you punish all those weights, you change all those weights a little bit, and you uh, keep doing that until it works well on the training data, and then you hope that it works well on subsequent data. <laughs> I like how you inserted hope there. I was just, <laughs> you just hit a switch and go, it's done! No, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, well, so do you feel, okay, th this one here is um, uh, a, a little bit related to, to, well, maybe not related to deep learning, but here's the next question. Do you feel like semantic web is dead? And by that, uh, I mean, uh, will we as consumers of search engine results need to rely on artificial intelligent sort of middleware to help us get value out of like our search engine results at some point? Uh, or, um, uh, you know, or do you believe that like maybe consumers or, or, or um, content creators will actually start uh, populating uh, the semantic web markup, you know? Of yeah. So. I see. So, so semantic web to me is kind of falls on the symbolic side of artificial intelligence. You have some symbol. This okay. thing is a car or it is not a car. Right. And neural networks are what's called the sub-symbolic or the connectionist model. Mm. And so for the longest time, we had the symbolic was, was the main thing. Okay. And neural networks would come and go. Um, but then recently, neural networks took over in this form of called deep learning. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of eclipsed symbolic methods, ah. and which is probably maybe brings up your question. Yeah. But deep learning is huge, and rightfully so, because it allows us to get past the brittleness of symbols. So you know, if you mislabel a symbol, or you, you say it's a car, but then someone says automobile, and, and mm -hmm. you, haven't, you haven't manually equated those two things, yeah. a symbolic system would be confused by that. Right. Whereas a deep learning system represents everything with vectors. Mm -hmm. And so a vector car, which a vector is just a long list of numbers. You could have a vector for a car, and a vector for an automobile, and those vectors, it will be learned um, through semi-supervised learning or unsupervised, learning, which is opposite of what I alluded to earlier for supervised learning. Okay. It can learn these vectors in an unsupervised way, and I can explain that in a moment if you like. Yeah. And it can learn that the vector for car and the vector for automobile are pretty much the same. So if you say either, mm -hmm. um, then it knows. And so that's been really great, and that's been a huge leap forward. But people are starting to realize that deep learning is going to need this symbolic as well because what what it misses out on is deep learning has a hard time understanding domain knowledge that we already have mm -hmm. so um 
we could you could type in your website and you can say, look, this website provides this service, that service, um, and it sells these types of products. And it would be hard to really represent that very well in a deep learning algorithm. You mm -hmm. could maybe give it a vector, but you'd really want to give it some symbolic. And yeah. so the work that I'm interested in, and a lot of other people are interested in, is how can we merge these things? How can we get the um, flexibility of deep learning while still having some of the symbolic? Yeah, and, and, and is uh, NLP or natural language processing, is that more on the symbolic side? Traditionally it has been, mm -hmm. and um, it's been really brittle and really depressing because what, <laughs> what we ended up yeah. doing is we would read a document, we'd count the number of times certain words appeared, mm -hmm. and we'd make a long vector so the word uh, taco appears four times, the word chicken appears twice, mm -hmm. and the word table appears three times, okay, that's the document. There's yeah. no... Yeah. Looking at the order of the words, or you know, just this bag of words, and <laughs> and now with deep learning, we're able to represent those words, and we're even able to represent we're able to represent those words using vectors, like I said before. Mm -hmm. So the machine knows that car and automobile are are the same, or pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. It even knows that truck is pretty much the same, mm -hmm. um, or lorry, and it can then also what deep learning can do is you can do use this thing called a recurrent neural network, mm -hmm. whereas it takes the all the words it learns. Yeah, all the vectors one after another, and it kind of computes a state, which is a docu uh, a vector that represents the entire document mm -hmm. as you go on. Okay. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and I forgot your initial question. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, and, and that's fine. Yeah, I, what I was trying to do, I think, was uh, was see like where, you know where does natural language processing fit in? Ah, and yes. I, and I think you answered. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it's really been a huge revolution in natural language processing mm -hmm. um, using these deep learning methods. It used to be we had. Um, um, you can even use it for parsing mm -hmm. sentence like we used to do in school, you know, diagram out the sentence yeah. and uh, named entity recognition. So is this George Washington? Uh, is this the person? Okay, well, what about a mention of Washington? Is it the state or mm -hmm. is it the person or is it Washington, D.C.? Yeah. And deep learning has even helped to start doing that as well. That's exciting. That, that's good stuff. Uh, like in, I mentioned in another interview, it's, it's a far cry from, you know, Dragon Naturally Speaking, you know, uh, not taking anything away from it. <laughs> Back when I was a kid, that was incredible. You know? <laughs> it is amazing that even my daughter can talk, you know, she's five years old, talks into the, out, into the smartphone and it understands her. Yeah. It doesn't understand what she's saying, <laughs> but it understands the words. <laughs> So now you co-founded Deep Grammar with uh, Dr. Jimmy Good about two and a half years ago. Yep. Uh, as an artificial intelligence company that's focused on personal uh, assistance. Uh, so what, what inspired you uh, to co-found uh, this company? Yeah, so I've always been dismayed at how bad grammar checkers are. Yeah. And I, we all make a lot of mistakes when we write. Mm. Dumb mistakes. Mm -hmm. I make more than most. <laughs> yeah. And. And it's, it's always surprised me that the grammar checker can't tell that, obviously, I didn't mean to write whatever phrase I wrote. Yeah. I know that you don't write that three times in a row. Well, they, didn't, they can't catch that. But <laughs> there are some really dumb things that, mm -hmm. that they should be able to catch, mm -hmm. uh, um, like two, 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 or there, there, these types of things, mm -hmm. or just words that I didn't mean to write that word at all. I was thinking some other word, and I got confused. And the grammar checker seemed to be more tailored for people who are just learning how to write, so they'll say things like, oh, you're using passive voice, or you're, yeah. um, you know, it's a run-on sentence or something. And I wanted something that could just follow behind me and let me know um, when I made a mistake, and mm -hmm. so I didn't have to read over everything so many times. Oh, all right, so it was it was to solve uh, just a, a nagging issue that, that you were experiencing. You're like, darn it, the artificial intelligence can solve this. Yeah, and, and so one way I'd always thought about doing it would be to use machine learning, and mm -hmm. so, with the symbolic methods, you have um, you could do these things called n-grams. So you can count the number of times that I went is followed by the word store. Mm -hmm. Or you can count the number of times I went, or I guess it would be to the store. Or I went is followed by uh, the word home. Or I went is followed by the word crazy. Mm -hmm. But there are so many possible combinations of words that you can't possibly store all of these statistics. Right. And um, so what, when deep learning came around, it, it allows you, I mentioned the vectors earlier, representing everything as a list of numbers. Right. And so now instead of representing um, each word as an individual symbol, you represent it as a vector, and it can learn that um, I went home um, is, is similar in meaning to I went to my house. Mm. And you don't have to represent those as completely separate things. And yeah. so there's, the learning mechanism can generalize a lot better. And so okay. it's finally possible to do this kind of grammar checking that I've always <laughs> wished we had. Yeah, and you were here to see your dream you know, come true. And I, there's, a, there's a demo, right, a live demo online? There is a live demo. And so currently I've been 
working on a coding and stuff for about a year, mm -hmm. and it works about as well as the ones out there. Okay. And so what's really exciting about that is I'm just getting started. We're just getting started. I got my co-founder now. And so yeah. um, I think with this approach, it's really going to take off. That's good. Well, uh, people who write like myself will really appreciate uh, <laughs> seeing that. Um, uh, so I read your company offers two AI solutions, one of which is Deep Grammar, which uh, we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and um, how about Happy Cyborg? <laughs> what exactly is a consumer application for building communities on Twitter, and how does that help us? Yeah, so I, um, I wrote a book a few years back about parenting and, mm -hmm. and teaching kids to grow up and be technologically savvy and sort mm -hmm. of thing. And I thought, well, how do I get the word out? This book is about how the world is new and the old paradigms no longer exist. Although, I, did I just say the word paradigms? That's embarrassing. <laughs> Let's just strike Grammar it. Grammar track. <laughs> um, and so I didn't want to go to traditional publishing route. I wanted to publish it myself. Mm -hmm. And um, then, the word, then the problem is, well, how do you get people to know about it? Mm. And so Twitter seemed like a natural place to do this. Yeah. And so I tried to build a community of like-minded uh, people on Twitter, and I found that, you know, a lot of this could be... I could use a helper here. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of... Th I found myself saying the same phrases over and over again in response to certain questions, or I found that... I'm using certain keywords or certain key phrases to help determine who I should follow yeah. to try to build that community. And so, deep, I mean, Happy Cyborg is, it came out of that. It's like, I need a personal assistant for this. Yeah. And uh, so I built that in, in response to that. So now that one also sounds like it has a lot of commercial, uh, you know, uh, viability to it. I mean, uh, is, that, is that something that we might see at South By this year, <laughs> next year? Um, it, not at South By, but, but yeah, there's, um, you know, there's been some, you know, NPR, their little blog did a little write-up on it. Yeah. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. That's and good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Because it, it can be, like, starting from scratch can be a lot of work to build that Twitter community and, you know, know what keywords. I was helping someone promote her book, and it was uh, Chick Lit. And I was, I'd, I'd never heard the term even Chick Lit, mm -hmm. Chick Girl Literature. And, uh, and so, you know, like, I started learning, like, what words do I even use to start finding these people, you know? And, yeah. yeah. Well, one thing I found, too, is that you want to not just find them. You want to actually build relationships with people. Yeah. And I found that the way I did that or the way I talked to people is I, I look for certain jumping off points. So if someone mentions like the author Cormac McCarthy, mm -hmm. then I got something to say because The Road is my favorite book. Okay. And then I say, hey, The Road is my favorite book. And I found, I found that I do that every time. <laughs> yeah. I'm like an automaton. <laughs> so, so I... Happy Cyborg allows you to encode that. Uh -huh. Now, of course, our artificial intelligence isn't smart enough to actually have the conversation that you would have, but what it yeah. does is it yeah. starts the conversation, uh -huh. and someone says, oh, yeah, what did you think about, uh, well, I don't want to give any spoilers, what did you think about that part of the book? And, uh -huh. uh, and then that's where you, the human, would come in and say, ah, oh, I found someone who's interested in this book, yeah. just like I am, yeah. and they've responded to me. So let me now start the conversation. Right, you'll get some sort of alert that says, hey, well, we need some, it nudges you, we need some input here, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, human, time to take over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's great. Um, uh, Jonathan, thanks so much for your time telling us about uh, all the cool things that you're doing. Oh, thanks for having me, it's been fun. Yeah, and we look forward to talking again in the future. Oh, great, thanks a lot. Thank you. Now, I do have a bonus question. Bonus question is, really quick, let me ask you, are we still running? I guess yes. I'll go. Um, in this world, uh, what single yet unsolved killer app would you like to see built using artificial intelligence? And by that I mean, what do you want to see accomplished through AI that you feel like you could use in everyday life? Oh, well, so I had one in mind before he said everyday life. So what I want accomplished is I want AI to answer the life, universe, and everything. Like what is, you know, take our current physics and let us know where it's wrong, let us know what's up with these other dimensions, all gotcha. that crazy stuff. Gotcha. Now in everyday life, um, it, it's been the grammar checker and that's what yeah. I've been working on. Awesome, so you, you get that puzzle solved and then from there it's just on to uh, super uh, AI? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I'm sure it's just a small step. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you, you got us halfway there. <laughs> that's awesome, right. thanks so much. Thank you. All right.